Welcome to the Dark Souls speedrunning guide. This is the second part of the live split episode. In the first one, I showed you how to set up your splits and layout, which are re each respectfully stored on an LSS and an LSL file, and I explained briefly what the previous segment, possible time save, and best possible time components each do and how they work. But other than that, we didn't talk much about what the numbers you see on the splits mean and how to interpret them. It's not uncommon for people to set up their splits and start running without actually knowing what all the information displayed on them means. In the second part of the tutorial, I'll do my best to explain precisely that. As you can see, I've done some fake runs to store some times on the splits file that we set up on the previous video, so we can take a look at what they are. After that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the different comparisons you can run against other than the personal best, which is the one by default, and we'll also do a fake run so we can take a look in real time at how the different numbers and comparisons behave throughout it. First we have the split time column. This is the total run time split into segments. Every time you split, the overall timer keeps running, but a snapshot of the exact time when the split happened is stored. This is what's by default displayed on the column on the right on your layout. Then we have the segment time. This is the actual amount of time that the segment took to complete, as opposed to being just a snapshot of what the overall time was when the split happened, which is what the split time shows. You can see that the first split time and the segment time are the same, that's because both started from zero, and from there each split is equal to the segment time plus every other segment before it. So we have 189 for the first segment, and the next one is 301, so if we add up 301 plus 189, we would get 4.9. In this case, it's 1491, which is probably because there's more decimals behind the second that we can see, which is adding up to one extra one hundredth of a second here. Next, if we add up 2.31 to 491, we get 722. If we add 136 to that, we get 859. If we add 211 to that, we get 1070, etc., etc. Last but not least, we have the best segment times. These are what's commonly referred to as golds or gold segments. Essentially, they are the best segment times that you've ever had on each segment. So the segment time and the split time columns show the times for your personal best, meaning the fastest overall run that you've had. Instead of that, the best segment time shows you the best time that you've had for each segment among all the attempts that you've ever done. This is very useful information because it shows you that even though in your best run you had a three second volley segment, the best you can actually do that segment is at 192. So it shows you that you have some time to save there. If you add all of the best segment times together, you would get the best possible time that you can realistically get on a run if you did everything perfectly. Now that we know more or less what the numbers mean, let's take a look at what happens when we do a run. Before hitting start, I want to mention again that by default, LiveSplit will be comparing against your personal best. That means the best run that you've ever done in terms of the final time. When it comes to the personal best, the only thing that matters is the final time. It means that's the run that's ended with the lowest overall time. You can switch what your timer is comparing against in the dropdown here. You can switch from personal best to compare against the best segments. You can also compare against average segments. And you can also, if you go into settings, you can also add more comparisons. Here you have a list of comparisons you can possibly ask, add to, to the drop-down menu. And you can switch between those two. You can compare against the last run. You can compare against the worst segments. I don't know, there's a lot of options. Most people usually just leave this comparing against personal best. Sometimes if you have a PB that's uh, that's very spiky, like I mentioned, if it's very bad at the beginning and then it has like super good uh, segments at the end, those kinds of PB are pretty unsatisfying to run against because they make you feel bad all the time. So when people have PBs like that, they often use to compare against what it's called a balanced PB, which what it does is it splits the time loss among all the splits. So there's like an even amount of time loss in every split instead of having like some splits that have a lot of time loss and some splits that are perfect. So it's like a little bit more balanced. You can also do that. Or you can just compare against your average time. If you have like 
a, an extremely good PB that you can never possibly beat and you're always behind your PB, you can also compare against your average segments. That way you know, even though you're not beating your PB, you're still doing better than you usually do and that makes you feel good and, and makes you keeps you motivated to keep running. Now, when we start a run, you'll see that the big timer stops starts ticking and then a number appears at the side of our first split. I'm gonna pause here so we can comment on it. So you can see that a number appears at the on the left of our PB time. This column is referred to as a delta and it shows us how much time we are saving or losing compared to that PB time. In this case, when I paused, we were 13 seconds ahead of our PB, which means we are saving 13.1 seconds or we are minus 13.1. If I split now and I pause again, you saw that our timer was eight seconds when we when the split happened. So it override it, it overwrote the time that that it that was showing here with the actual time of this run. So the way it works is when you are running, when the when the split is active or it hasn't happened yet, it shows you the time of your PB or whatever comparison you're comparing against, in this case average, it shows you the comparison, but after you split, the timer here gets overridden by the time that you actually got in that run. So present and future splits show the comparison and past splits show you the actual time of this current run. And then the column on the left shows you the delta, meaning the amount of time that you saved or lost compared to that comparison, in this case, the average, but it will usually be the personal best. So if we keep running, you can see that the, the timer start, starts ticking again and we are going lower and lower and lower and every second that passes, the delta gets smaller and smaller because we are getting closer and closer to that actual uh, average time. Okay, so I want to pause here to comment on one other thing, which is this live segment module right here. Uh, I think by default, it shows you a comparison against the gold. So right now we are 8.8 .8 seconds ahead of our average, but we are already plus 2.3 seconds behind our gold. So what this is telling us is that we are beating our average time, but we are not beating our best time. So this is why the comparison with the best time is so useful, because while you're still saving time, you can still be, be mindful that, yeah, I'm saving time in the overall of the run compared to my average run, so I'm doing better than I usually do, but I'm not doing as good as I can possibly do. This is what this means. Now that we split, I wanted to pause for a second to mention two things. The first one is that we lost time on our previous segment. We can see that we lost 6.5 seconds on our last segment, which if we add that up to 5.5, it adds up to 12. So that checks out. Also, you can see, maybe, maybe you can't see because of the dark background, it's hard to see, but the green on the 5.5 is like a, a lighter green than the 12.1. What that means is that we lost time on the segment, but we still save time overall. The other thing that I wanted to show is that when I paused, there is no delta showing for the segment. And also this module at the bottom, which was the live segment a moment ago, now is showing previous segment instead. The reason that's happening, it's because you can see that the gold for this segment is 1.25 seconds. And we and I paused the timer before we were 1.25 seconds into the segment. So the timer is not, the delta is not showing because we haven't yet reached our gold time. We are ahead of our gold. So if I were to split right now, I would get a gold for this segment. Until we match or exceed the gold time, the delta will not show and the module at the bottom will show us the time that we saved or lost in the previous segment. Once we are past that gold mark, we will start seeing the delta 
and the module at the bottom will start showing the time for the live segment. So here, if I unpause the timer, soon you will see that the delta starts showing and the previous segment turns into live segment. There you go. So now, once again, if we split now, we will get another light green segment because we are still ahead of our average, but we lost time. We, we, at this point, we lost 0.2 seconds on this segment. So I'm gonna unpause and split and pause again. And once again, we are ahead of our gold, so we are not seeing the delta. And the previous segment is showing us that we lost just 0.6 seconds. Now I'm going to show you if we split immediately, we will get a gold on the segment. There you go. The gold was actually 0.0, .0 gold, which means that it was just like a millisecond time save. So it's not showing here, but it was a, it was a gold. If we do it, if we do it again, there you go. Now we got a whole second gold and we save time both on the overall time and on the segment. Now, if we, if we let the timer run so it catches up and we start losing time, the timer will turn red, as you can now see. So now that we are red, you can see that the timer just keeps sticking, the live segment just keeps going up and up and up, and the delta just keeps going up and up and up. And you can see if I pause, the delta and the, and the live segment are not the same. That's because we are only losing 16 seconds against the overall time, but we are losing 22 seconds compared to, compared to our gold because we had a six second buffer to begin with. So if we add the six seconds to the 16 seconds, we get the 22, which is the actual time that we are actually losing on the segment. Now, if I keep letting it run and run and run and I keep losing a ton of time and I split, you can see that immediately we go into the delta for the next segment, but we don't get the live segment module. That's because the delta still shows even though we haven't reached the time of the gold. So we are still ahead of the gold and we could gold if we split now, but we are still, even if we golded, we are still behind our overall time. So let me get a gold here. As you can see, you can get a gold and still be losing time. So I'm plus 22, I'm still behind on the overall time, but I saved 0 0.8 seconds compared to my gold in that segment. And for this next segment, again, we are still ahead of the gold, but we are yet 20.9 seconds behind on the overall clock. Let us finish the run. And when we split, now we're on the last split, and when we split for the last time, the run ends and the timer tells us that we are at 120, which is 23.7 seconds slower than our average time. And we also lost 0 0.9 seconds compared to our gold on the last segment. And that's it for the starting guide as a whole. You now know everything you need to know to start learning, practicing, running, and even streaming with a nice timer on your screen. From here, you'll likely want to check my tutorials playlist, which doesn't exist at the time of recording because I'm gonna start working on it as I publish this video, but there will likely be something up by the time you're watching. So go check that out. There you'll find quick tutorials for simple stuff like prompt swap, duping, or move swap, explanation of tech like toggling or fold image, and even longer tutorials for more complex stuff like light time skip. So see you there.